Well, hi, I'm Carl, and welcome to Adventures in Camping. Today, we're going to discuss more about the compass. First, we're going to look at the parts. Then, I'm going to show you how to use a base plate compass. Now, with the group that I teach, I give them the basics first before I get into declination. So today is going to be the basics, basic use of the compass, the base plate compass. Oh, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you know when I put out a new video, and let's get to it. Perhaps not considered a necessary piece of equipment for the five C's of survival, it is for the 10 C's, and you need to know how to use it so that you don't get lost. So now let's look at the different parts of the compass. So first we have the clear base plate so you can see the map. Then we have the index lines that are on the plate to line it up with the map. Of course, then there's the straight edge measurements. These are the scale sizes for your topographical maps. And the magnifying lens, which could be used to start a fire. Next part is the direction of travel arrow, give you your direction of travel. Then let's look at that housing, the bezel. Within that housing are several different parts, like your 360 degree markings for your direction indicators and the magnetic needle, where the red is for magnetic north. These are your meridian lines. And this is the orienting arrow. And while using the orienting arrow, this is where the phrase, keep the red and the shed, comes in handy. When we get the declination, I'll show you how we use these. Now, many of you probably know that all base plate compasses are not created equal. When I'm introducing someone to a compass and just teaching them how to use it, I use a very simple compass without all the extra stuff. I consider this more of a beginner's compass. There's less things to be distracted by because all you need to learn is how to shoot your azimuth or your bearing. Keep in mind, they are the same thing. So next, I'll show you how to do that. First, we're going to hold the compass level and perpendicular to our body. Let's say you have been given a 120 degree bearing to follow. So you want to set your compass by first setting the bearing or the azimuth. Okay, we're going to go at 120. So now I'm at 120. And now I'm going to turn my entire body until red is in the shed. Now the red is in the shed, I and my compass are in the proper direction of travel. Whoops, and if you need to make a little adjustment, you can. Now once we have the red in the shed, we want to look straight up and find that object in the distance that we're shooting our bearing toward. All right? And if I'm a little off, what I need to do is I need to rotate my whole body just a little bit. And look back down. And see where I am. Let's look at that right there, okay? Now, if I do that, I'm going to draw a line, imaginary line, all the way down to where my compass is, okay? Remember... Hold your compass a little ways from your body so that you don't have any interference from anything magnetic that could be on your body. A zipper, a button, a snap, anything. Once I arrive at the given point and have to change my bearing, I'm going to rotate the housing first to the new bearing setting. Then I'm going to turn my body until red is back in the shed. So now, I'm holding my compass out in front of me, like so. I'm holding it level. I'm adjusting my body just a little bit so that I'm actually perpendicular 
with the compass or the compass perpendicular with me. If you don't know what perpendicular is, think of a T. The bottom line is perpendicular to the top. So now I look out in the distance and I see what I can put my eye on and that's where I'm going to walk. At that point, I no longer need to worry about the compass, but I need to stare and well, watch where I'm walking, but I also need to stare at that point, that fixed point, and walk to it, and then on the other side of it, reshoot my azimuth or my bearing. There will be the occasion where I will find something, run into something, or I have to go around something to maintain my bearing. So let's say you're traveling through the woods and you come across an old shed and you're going along and maybe 120 degrees. Okay, you come to that shed, well you've got to go around that shed and if you don't know where you are on that shed or how big that shed is, what you're going to do is you're going to shoot an, a bearing or an azimuth 90 degrees. Once you've cleared that and maybe other obstructions, because if it's an old shed in the woods, it may have some big trees around it. So once you've marked those paces, then you're going to make another 90 and you're counting your paces this way you're counting your paces this way to pick up how many paces you left off here then you're going to make another 90 using this as your reference then you'll make that another 90 and then you're going to pick up where you left off that way you will maintain your bearing. Now another thing that you're going to have to think about while you're doing this is you're going to have to take in consideration well how far am I going? How do I know? That is what I'm going to tackle in the next video. We're going to get our pace or I'll get my pace, show you how to get your pace and that will give us a relative idea of how far we've went through the woods. I'll be honest with you, it's important to have an idea what your pace is so you have an idea of how far you have went. But, you know, if we can really complicate this thing and count our paces going uphill, count our paces going downhill, count our paces going on flat land, count our paces going through the woods. You know how many times you're going to have to go through all of that? And then put them all together, divided by the number of different versions you did, and give yourself an average, which might be wrong. There's no guarantee that your pace count is going to be accurate, but it's better than nothing. And that's another reason why we use the ranger beads, because we use the ranger beads to kind of keep account of our paces. Because it's going to be really easy to lose your concentration and forget how many paces you went. So while you're going through the woods, if you don't have a map, declination really isn't going to do you a lot of good. Unless you have a map, then declination and knowledge of how to use it is very important. So, so the basics of using a basic compass without declination is pretty easy. Well, there you have it. That is the basics of using a base plate compass. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And be ready and don't be removed from the gene pool. Y'all come back now, you hear? Check out one of these videos that I'm posting. Oh, and again, subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you know when I put out a new video. And 
See you next time.